Mahler II is a very special piece because in that piece he goes through all the different emotions, all the different states, all the different... It, the process of life is all included in that piece. And Mahler's symphonies are always, it's the whole life included, and this is one of the finest examples of his work. Uh, it begins with a kind of a tone poem, Totenfeier. Uh, it's followed by a beautiful Lendler. Then there's a scherzo, which, which is from his Wunderhorn songs. Then we have Urlich, the primal light, and then, of course, the last moment where he incorporates the Alfestem uh, poem, which he then added a few lines to the choir. And, uh, and the arch of it is so wonderful. So you begin with this extreme dramatic first movement. You go through the different emotions, different parts of life, and so to say. Uh, the gentle moments. The, in Mahler's music, there's always a lot of nostalgia, and also in this piece. Uh, the scherzo is very playful, has also some uh, celebratory, but also some dramatic elements about it. Uh, the fourth movement, of course, has the, the, the clarity, um, and then the four, f fifth movement is the which he has everything together. I mean, this is the first symphony where Mahler really um, is digging very deep in what was to become his trademark. So, so what will happen after life, um, after death? Um, and in this case, it's very clear he, he's celebrating the fact that it's, it's Alpha Steum, uh, resurrection. And after this, he, he continued to, to experiment on, on that. And, and there's Third Symphony, Fourth Symphony, especially, which tells in the last moment, a uh, himmlisch Leben, the, the, the life, heaven life. Uh, but this was the first experiment of his, and in many ways, some of the most interesting and exciting music of all his work. It's a wonderful piece, the second Mahler, because it, it's written in a very good way. Uh, it's written in a way that it, the instrumentation always uh, gives a very specific color to each part, its passage. Um, in my opinion, it's written in a way that it's easier than many of the other Mahler symphonies to perform, even that it has a massive amount of different parts. The orchestra is big, there's a choir, two soloists. But of course, smaller symphonies, they always give you a certain challenge, the architecture of, of everything, and to find the perfect character for everything. And in Mahler, often the emotions are very extreme. You know, when he's sad, he's indescribably sad. And when he's happy, there's this joy which just sparkles. And um, to have that in the music and really to, to, to find this, this sound which is never neutral, it's never normal but it always has something very special. And, and in this movement, and in this symphony, in fact, there, there are so many things which you have to go to the very extreme. And he writes them, piano pianissimo, super soft, and then until, of course, the greatest climax and the last chord where he has the full orchestra and the great organ, which we have also very nice here. It's always very special to conduct a choir, um, and a choir which concludes the symphony, because, of course, Mahler was, was a conductor himself. He did a lot of opera, so, Voices were very familiar to him, different kind of voices. Um, of course, Beethoven 9 was a great role model for, uh, for him and for all the composers as a symphony. And in this case, it's very special because the choir comes in in a very unexpected way. Uh, of course, it, it in a way pre presents the climax of the last movement at the end, but when they sing for the first time, they sing this Auferstein text and it's so soft that you don't you shouldn't even know where the sound comes from so it's a very unexpected way to have the choir and of course gradually it grows and grows and grows and finally uh, arrives in this wonderful last climax so um, how he treats the choir is unexpected but extremely fulfilling and rewarding i love working with choirs in general um, and we have a wonderful choir of our own here uh, the workers Parry choir and of course they've done this piece many times so they have it in their blood but it's always interesting to experiment on different colors and different balances. And this is a very nice, nice thing to rehearse with them. And um, Mahler too is always a special thing to rehearse because there are so many different parts. Uh, so you have to make sure you play long enough stretches because if you uh, stop after every single bar, it will get very bitty. So you have to make sure there is enough long lines and then we make sure every detail works within that. And that's the same with working with the choir. It's wonderful to have Betty Jollis here uh, in the rehearsals and in the concerts. And the work she's written for us is very special because it's extremely fresh. It's music which is shouting, speaking, dancing, a lot of dancing. Um, it has a lot of different sounds, uh, special effects. The orchestra needs to sing a little bit, hum, in fact, speak. 
Um, and it's wonderful to have music which uh, it really feels like it's written yesterday. And it, it's so fresh. Uh, you know, the ink, ink hasn't, hasn't even dried yet. Um, and to have something like that from a composer of such maturity and experience uh, in life and music is, is really special. I love working with living composers because I can ask them about the detail. I wish I could call Mahler and ask, why the hell did you write this in, in this and that? Uh, about, for example, the offstage things and so on. Uh, but I can't. Um, but better Jolas, I can, I can turn around and ask, um, hey, uh, would you like this long or short? And she give a very clear answer. Or well, then we can have a conversation. And I, I love working with living composers. And I think it's great to, for example, in this case, we have Mahler too, which is a wonderful piece. And in a way, it doesn't need anything with it. But if we have something special to present with it, it works very well. And in this case, we give a little space to, to the better Jolas, who, of course, has all these wonderful works, which already have become today's classics. But we have another piece which has the potential to be the classic in the future.